So yeah, here's the deal. Anthropic dropped this article right after Opus 4.5, all about how to actually make AI agents handle long, complex tasks without just falling apart mid-build. And honestly, the timing couldn't be better because Anthropic's not just saying, make the context window bigger. They're actually looking at how human coders work, the way we plan, commit, write stuff down, check off tasks, keep things clean session after session. That's the whole angle here. The article's less about wild new agent features, more about how do we get Claude to work like, well, a dev. Just real quick, I'm Daniel. I've been living in the iOS trenches for over eight years now. I started off freelancing, working with clients, figuring out what actually works, and honestly got tired of the corporate ping pong. But after Dub Dub 25, I kind of flipped the switch and went all in on solo dev life. Since then, I've crafted over 10 of my own apps, started building in public, and right now, pretty much all my energy is going into Crafters Lab. It isn't just another tutorial site or some AI clone farm. This is my actual home base. It's for solo devs who want to use AI like a real teammate, not like a vending machine. So yeah, I'm keeping it short, but if you want your own solo command center and be part of the crew, that's what Crafters Lab is for. And yeah, if you're still on Patreon, massive thanks. But heads up, everything's moving over to crafterslab.dev. Honestly, if you wanna get in and lock your membership before things get busy, and before I roll out real pricing, now's the best time to join. For real, come be part of the crew. Let's start with the real enemy for solo devs, context windows. I mean, it's kind of the curse of all these AI tools. Every new coding session, clean slate, zero memory. The core pain is, if your project or task is too big to fit inside one of those windows, the agent just drops the thread. And yeah, you can try to paste in a summary or use some fancy compaction feature, but nine times out of 10, you're cleaning up after the mess, not preventing it. And honestly, this is why building big features, refactoring or anything long running with an agent always feels like Groundhog Day. You make some progress, the window fills up, the agent tries to summarize, and suddenly it's forgetting tests, breaking features, or worst of all, just marking everything as done so it can move on. If you've ever come back to a half-finished session and found the agent totally lost, this is exactly why. The real kicker is context windows don't just waste tokens, they burn your focus. You spend more time reminding Claude or Cursor what we were doing than actually building. That's the real solo dev struggle Anthropic is getting at. And no, just making the window bigger isn't enough. Without better structure, more tokens just means more room for chaos. Here's where it actually gets interesting. Anthropic isn't just saying throw more memory at the problem. They're proposing a full-on agent harness. Think of it like a workflow upgrade for your agent with two roles, the initializer agent and the coding agent. The initializer's whole job, set up the project like a real dev would. It makes a plan, sets up a progress file, literally a running text log or JSON checklist, and does an initial commit. This is wild because it's basically scripting the onboarding that solo devs already do for themselves, outlining features, writing down what's not done, chunking big tasks into bite-sized pieces. After that, every single coding agent session is scoped. It works on one task, updates the progress file, commits code, and leaves things in a clean, shippable state, no unfinished business, no mystery branches. That progress file, it's like a living checklist for your agent, so every new session, the coding agent knows exactly what's left, what's passing, what needs work. It's honestly what I've started doing myself, just with Markdown or Notion, not JSON. But here Anthropic uses JSON because it keeps the agent from getting creative and rewriting the checklist mid-build. It's harder for Claude to hallucinate or nuke a JSON file compared to a Markdown doc. And this is the secret. By ruthlessly scoping every session, by only letting the agent touch one task at a time, and by leaving a real trace in Git in the progress file, 
you're not just coding. You're teaching the agent to work like a disciplined solo dev, not a hackathon bot. So the last big piece is where things always break for AI, testing and verification. If you've ever used an agent to build tests, you know how often it'll just say the tests pass, even if you can see they clearly don't. It's classic AI hallucination. Run a test, ignore the result, mark the feature as done. Anthropic's answer, give agents access to real tools, let them run tests, use playwright or dev tools, and actually verify that a feature works before checking it off in the progress file. If it fails, the agent updates the status. If it passes, it can move on. It's not magic, but it's the workflow we all wish Claude code or cursor used by default. This is huge for trust because for me, the thing that makes or breaks any agent isn't speed or sounding smart. It's whether I can trust it to finish a real feature, not just call it done after running a single test. The only way you get there is by giving your agent structure, rituals, and no joke, a checklist. Anthropic is basically codifying the good solo dev habits into agent workflows. So yeah, the big takeaway here, Anthropic's not just throwing more compute at the problem, they're getting closer to how solo devs already work when they're actually in flow. They're saying break it down, write things up, update the checklist, test, verify, then move on. It's slow, it's methodical, but it's how you actually ship something you can trust, even when your teammate is a language model. And honestly, I've started running my own sessions more like this, kicking things off with a plan file, keeping my progress in a checklist, never letting the agent bite off more than one feature at a time. If you're working with Claude, Cursor, or whatever, and you keep getting burned by context resets or hallucinated done messages, try it. This is the workflow I wish I had from day one. So yeah, if you're still hanging out here at the end, honestly, you're a legend. And, you know, I mean it because wrangling agents, fighting through context resets, all of that, it's not easy. And it's definitely not as push button as everyone on Twitter says it is. But if you're here, still building, still poking at the edges of what these tools can do, you're in good company. And honestly, if you're tired of spinning the roulette wheel with agent tools, this might be your sign to go deeper, not wider. Like, get a real workflow, build yourself some habits that survive all the chaos, you know what I mean? And yeah, check out crafterslab.dev. It's not just some tutorial dump. It's not another AI clone farm. It's honestly my home base. I built it for solo devs who treat AI like a real teammate, not just a button you smash when you're stuck and you know, it's packed. You get full walkthroughs, like uh, actual short video tutorials, notes from the trenches, and yeah, straight up downloadable zips you can drop right into your project. The real magic is in the crew. Members get to actually riff in the comments, ask follow-ups, go back and forth, and yeah. That's just the start, because the real core is the Notion team spaces, my live playbook, the real command center, all the dashboards for every app, agentready.md files, every weird prompt library, all the exact systems I use to keep my solo workflow moving with AI. There's a full curated Swift and Swift UI library in there too, not just random files, but the actual stuff I use to fine tune models and build out my own custom MCPs for Claude code, for cursor, all of it. If you wanna get your hands on the resources I actually rely on day to day, it's all sitting there, not just for watching, but for remixing into your own stack. And, and then of course, there's Ops Lab. That's honestly my favorite part. It's where I build and share all my AI agent systems, Notion templates, the workflows, automations all wired up and ready for you to copy, tweak, totally break and make your own. The whole point is to keep the indie stack connected so you don't feel like you're building in a silo, even if you're solo at the keyboard. So yeah, if you want to get in before it gets busy and prices start moving, now's kind of the sweet spot. The crew's still small, super hands-on, and honestly, it feels way more like a behind-the-scenes dev lounge than some 
giant faceless forum. Would love to see you in there, swap some stories, maybe even learn something from what you're building next. All right, that's it for me. Keep crafting, keep shipping. Peace.